Hello and welcome to Waltrip Unfiltered. We're bringing you the fifth episode of our podcast. And today we've got some interesting topics we're going to cover. Kyle Bush. He finally got number 200. Finally, right? At the age of 33. What an accomplishment. We're going to talk about that. Plus the issues in qualifying from Cali last weekend and the 2019 cars and the racing we're seeing on the track. And a special guest, Cole Custer, will join us. And we're going to do it all right now. Green play, green play. We're coming to you from the Fox Studios, this time in Charlotte, North Carolina. Last week, we were over in Hollywood with Fox, and, and we brought it back to the East Coast. The West Coast swing was a very entertaining, a nice run on the West Coast, and we saw a lot of energy. We saw some great racing, and we saw an uptick in the viewership. And for the first four races of 2019, more people watch NASCAR on Sunday than any other event. Viewership has gone down a bit lately, and it was nice to see that heading in a new direction. And I think it has a lot to do with the drama around Kyle Busch chasing number 200. Kyle has done an amazing job of winning races in not only the Monster Energy Cup Series, but also the Xfinity Series and the Gander Outdoors Truck Series. And it all came together for him this past weekend in Cali. He was turned away by Cole Custer on Saturday afternoon. Cole got his car out front after some issues by Kyle's team on pit road. And when he got that lead, he drove away. What an impressive run for Cole Custer. And we were talking about Kyle Busch, but let me just say something about Cole Custer. That, what he accomplished on Saturday afternoon, beating the best driver ever in the Xfinity Series, that ponders a question. It makes me wonder, is 2020 the year Cole Custer goes cup racing? That's certainly something that we're going to talk to him about because that type of performance and the job that he did behind the wheel of his number double zero car makes you wonder, is that what's next? You know, he ran a few races last year in the Cup Series in a car prepared by Stuart Haas. Not, nothing to brag about, but certainly got his feet wet in the series. And just to tell you how much he's respected, on, on um, Sunday morning, Austin Dillon took sick. He didn't feel well. And they needed a replacement driver, perhaps. And they put Cole Custer in his seat. Cole fitted in and was ready and on standby. But fortunately, Austin was able to go the distance. He, uh, he didn't look great before the start of the race, but a top 10 finish, that's exactly what it takes to cure the crud. And I know that because I've gotten behind the wheel of my car when it didn't feel well. And when it runs well, that's some really good medicine. And I'll just be honest with you, Producer Alex, I don't feel good today. I went to California and I picked up a bit of a cold, brought it back to North Carolina with me. But shoot, I love racing. I love talking about racing. So we're going to have some fun, despite the fact that I'm, I'm about... I'm about a half a cylinder down. I think I got a burnt plug wire, but we're going to fight through it. And, of course, Kyle gets number 200. What a what an amazing performance on Sunday. They had that pit road speeding penalty, and he just – he was relentless in his pursuit to the back. I was watching the race on Fox NASCAR yesterday, and some of the moves he was making coming through the field, it, it has to make some of the drivers that say passing is – difficult they, they must feel bad about themselves today because <laughs> he made he made it look easy he drove right up through the field and it isn't easy I understand that and I know how hard it is believe me I've been there and done that but the fact that he was able to drive through the field the way he did and get to get to the front and then win the race was was a certainly I think a way that a lot of people wanted to see Kyle Busch get number 200 they didn't want to see it happen in a truck or an Xfinity car, <laughs> if they wanted to see it happen at all, it was in a Monster Energy Cup car, and that's exactly the way it went down. And let me just tell you something. There's been so much talk about Richard Petty's 200 wins and Kyle's now 200 wins, and the only comparison that you can make to those, both amazing accomplishments, is you watch something you will never see again. Richard Petty's 200 cup wins and Kyle Busch's 200 wins across the top three series of NASCAR, I believe, I'm, I'm positive, will never be accomplished again. The rules change. The criteria of which you can compete, they change. And it's changed to a point where you can't win 200 races anymore. And plus, no one's even close. 
that runs the trucks and the Xfinity at this point, and it just it just won't happen. So the comparison, people are trying to say which is better. It doesn't. It doesn't it don't think about that. Don't even worry about that. Just remember and appreciate that when Richard Petty won number 200 and when Kyle Busch won number 200 this past Sunday in California, it'll, it'll never happen again. You witnessed history. And you know what's crazy about Kyle? He's not done. <laughs> He's going to go to Martinsville this weekend and try to leave there with 202 wins. So while Richard's accomplishment people want to put it on a throne because he's the king. I do too. And I do not want to put Kyle Busch ahead of Richard Petty. And I don't really even want to put him under Richard Petty. I just think they're two awesome accomplishments that set high upon the history of NASCAR. And I believe that they should both be celebrated equally. Was it more difficult to do what Richard did or was it more difficult to do what Kyle did? I don't care. They're, they're both awesome accomplishments and I was so blessed that I got to share the racetrack with Richard Petty and I got to race against Kyle Busch and so that's pretty cool right I got to race against Dale Earnhardt Jimmy Johnson everybody that has done special things in this sport I shared the track with them and I appreciate and respect each one of their accomplishments I just don't want to rank them I want to put them all up there together the King seven championships Jimmy's seven championships Five in a row. Dale Earnhardt's seven. And his popularity and how he grew the sport. Jeff Gordon's 93 wins. We talked about Mount NASCAR last week. How I think six faces belong <laughs> on Mount NASCAR. I feel even more strongly about that today. And, and putting Kyle up there with those other five awesome Hall of Fame racers. So I've talked about so many positive things, the, the energy around the West Coast swing, the, the viewership on Fox going up, the awesome accomplishment by Kyle Busch, Cole Custer turn him, <laughs> turning him away on Saturday and making him wait till Sunday. I thought that was really cool, by the way. But then there's, there's the negative. It's out there. We see it on the Twitter machine. Personally, I wish they'd closed Twitter. I like Instagram. I'm artistic. But on Twitter, people are saying qualifying was, was embarrassing. Uh, I didn't tune in to watch cars sit still. I wanted to see them go fast. I get all that. In fact, on the stat sheet that I'm reading here today, it says pole speed, zero miles per hour. Now, that's incorrect, but it's pretty damn funny. The pole speed was actually whatever Austin Dillon ran in round two because that's how he got the pole. But – Having the cars drive to the end of pit road and sit there and wait to try to figure out when to go to get the best chance to win the pole, that, that was definitely something that, that race fans in general didn't like seeing. And I will just tell you from my standpoint, I understood it completely. So, so I wasn't offended by it because I knew exactly what was going on. And I was listening to XM today and crew chief Adam Stevens summed it up best he said what did we have to gain if we were fourth we were fourth in round two if I go out and go first I'm going to end up 12th do I want to be fourth or I want to be 12th? I think I want to be fourth and he said I don't want to be the buffoon that goes out first so after a lot of thought I decided the blame for what happened in qualifying on Friday in California goes solely on the shoulders of the number 17 car of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Now, I'm not blaming Ricky because he's just sitting there waiting to do what he's told to do. Am I blaming Brian Patty? I don't know. I didn't have the radio transaction from Brian to Ricky to the spotter, but they qualified 12th. They're the only car that had nothing to lose. They go out first. They qualified 12th. They set on the end of pit road. They qualify 12th. If you're Kyle Busch, Adam Stevens, you're fourth. If you're, if you're Austin Dillon, you're on the pole if you don't roll. Racers are about winning. Winning the pole at Auto Club Speedway included strategy. Those guys were all set. They all knew where they were going to start. Now, do you want to place a little bit of blame on 11th, 10th, maybe to take a chance? Here's what I'd have done. If I was Ricky Stenhouse Jr., if I was Brian Patty, the decision makers in that group, 
I would have fired off with about a minute 30. And I've told people this strategy, this plan, prior to the drivers not getting to make a qualifying run in that third round in Auto Club on Friday, if I was Ricky, I would have fired off. And when he fires off with about a minute and a half to go, they all go with him. And then as soon as he gets that thing about hung in third gear, winding off that apron on the back straightaway and down a ways, I'm just going to dive to the bottom and, and just stop like a mother. Now, everybody can't react that fast. Everybody, they don't know what you're doing. They're just chasing you. They want draft. He could have done that, pulled over, slowed down, stopped. At least a couple of cars would have gotten ahead of him, and they would have had the decision to make, oh, no, what do we do? Well, you can't all stop that quickly. And he could have fallen back fifth or sixth in line, got her wound up, and seen what happened. That would have been my plan. If I was 12th, what have I got to lose? I'm going to start 12th anyway. That would have been awesome to watch, too, by the way. And also blame NASCAR. And I blame NASCAR because, A, they saw what happened in the trucks. They saw, um, I do the trucks on Fox. And a couple years ago, we had group qualifying. The trucks are big. They're boxy. They don't have a ton of horsepower. Draft is everything. And we saw the same thing happen at Michigan where nobody went. One guy went by himself and got the pole. No one else made it off pit road because they were all waiting to draft. So they, they saw this. They knew this. They know what they're dealing with. So I told you if I was Ricky, because I'm a racer, and I always raced, that would have been my plan if I was Ricky. And if I was NASCAR up in the, the control tower, when all 12 of those cars started rolling, and they came down the back straightaway and come off turn four, come into the green, I got to watch. I can say, oh, they're not going to make it. I'm going to say, Turn the clock off. They're all rolling, all 12 of them. Let's see what happens. And had that qualifying session go down. Like, they can change the rules. They, they, it's, it's their sport. They can change them when they need to. That could have been a chance on the fly to say, eh, we're going to turn that clock off because they're all going to make it. They're all together. It's fair for everybody. And then we wouldn't be having this debate. I wouldn't be looking at this stat sheet that says pole speed, zero miles per hour. Although that's really funny. <laughs> And now about the 2019 cars. I think I'm going to end this discussion here. The racing is more competitive. We talked about it at Atlanta. We talked about it at Vegas. And it was certainly the case at Auto Club Speedway this weekend. Last year, Truex won by 11 seconds. This year, a couple seconds and a half. 11 more drivers finished on the lead lap this year at Fontana than last year. And there were more leaders and more lead changes. All right? That's the facts. Those are the facts, ma'am. Chew on those. Career win number three for Cole Custer comes at Auto Club Speedway. Today's guest is the winner from the Xfinity race at Auto Club Speedway, Cole Custer. How are you, buddy? Not too bad. Thanks for having me on. Man, it's awesome you came here. How you like my set? Things pretty sweet. Yeah. I, I like it. Got uh, I drove I drove that Ferrari at Le Mans. That was pretty cool. Yeah. And then this was my Bristol crash. Do you ever YouTube that? Oh yeah, I've seen that before. I like this helmet right here. I don't know what's going on really. It's like a open face slash, uh, you know, new helmet. I don't really know what's going on there. Well, if you we'll take a picture and put it on our Twitter because it's really cool. But you know what that is? That's Kool Aid Man. <laughs> you know what's happened to him? <laughs> he has taken a tire to the head. This is the helmet I was wearing when I had that wreck in Bristol. Isn't that crazy? That thing's crazy, man. I know it. Yeah, that was back in the I've day. I've never seen a helmet like that, though. <laughs> and when I saw you for the first time, it was something I'll never forget. Because your crew chief, Joe Shear Jr., you had a really fast truck up in Loudoun, 16 years old. And uh, you, you decided to pit for tires. And I'm like, man, Loudoun's tough. How's he going to do this? And you stormed through the field and won a truck race when you were 16. That was pretty cool. Yeah, that was, uh, you know, probably one of the biggest wins that I've had so far, just because it kind of, everybody kind of got to know me at that point, because I was the youngest, youngest winner, but it was, uh, it was a really cool win, because like you said, we got, we had to get, go backwards a little bit on our pitch strategy, and then we made it back up at the very end, so it was, it was a race I'll definitely never forget, but hopefully it wins more. Oh yeah, well, you said it was the biggest win so far, but I, I might have to disagree. I, I loved what you did on Saturday, because 
Kyle Busch was so determined to get number 200 and had a fast car, and you were able to, to get the lead late. And a lot of people don't watch real close like I do because I'm a racer. Every lap, you were better than Kyle all the way to the checker. There, you had the fastest car, and you, you, you won the race. It didn't have anything to do with air. He wasn't close enough to you to, to feel your air. Yeah, I mean it was it was pretty crazy. I mean, especially when you get Kyle Busch behind you, you you know you get a little bit nervous. <laughs> you know, hopefully, you know, just so you can get bigger in your mirror. But I just knew I had to hit my marks, and it, it was what it was. As long as I didn't make a mistake, uh, I thought I was going to be all right. But that that was definitely huge for me, just because it was a hometown track and everything. Yeah, I love the hometown races and getting to win in your hometown. And you said you say hit your marks, and we're talking about speeds upwards of 190 miles an hour, and then running. Just a, a car went or so off the wall. Hitting your mark seems simple, you know. What goes into that, though? I mean, there's a lot. I mean, I'm a really uh, – I use visual markers a lot. Uh, like, so they have numbers on the fence line when you're going down the straightaways to kind of – so then you know, like, where to lift at. So I kind of use those to, to reference. Then you kind of – your brake pressure, it's – your brake pressure is kind of tough because there's not really good marker. You're just kind of going off a of feel for that. But it's just a matter of – you know, repetition, getting it consistent, and I think you know we've we've done it for so long. You just get better and better at it. When you're a five year old kid, you're you're all over the place, but uh, just it comes with time. And and a part of the the hitting your marks were were lap cars, and you had some that you had to go low, go high. There was a lot going on all the way to the checkered. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's uh you know the lap cars were a little bit difficult. It wasn't wasn't too bad though. I mean, they mostly got all got out of the way and uh, worked with me pretty good, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was I was thinking that there was going to be some type of a caution or something with like two to go, but uh, luckily, I mean, we just were able to kind of ride it out to the finish there. Well, you did an awesome job, and it was fun to watch. And I guess you were rewarded on Sunday morning uh, when you were having <laughs> breakfast. They called you up and said you might need to get in the three car. That that had to feel pretty cool. Yeah, like I got. Got a call and I was like, "This can't be that important." <laughs> I didn't pick up. I was like, "I'm just gonna hang out today." And uh, then it was like, "I need to." The person said, "You need to call me immediately." And I was like, oh, "All right, what did I do wrong?" <laughs> yeah, that's what I would have thought exactly. <laughs> and then uh, I I heard you know Austin was sick and uh, I I might have to get in the car, so that was pretty crazy. Uh, you know, that morning I didn't expect having to do that at all, but it was a really cool opportunity to get to be on standby though. What What were you doing? Having a little breakfast? Yeah, I was at a fast food place getting breakfast, like eating my eggs and my pancakes and my sausage, and uh, all of a sudden, you know, I'm driving the three car in, in an hour. Yeah, and and last year you ran a few cup races. What was that experience like? It's crazy, honestly. I mean, it's uh, the competition is just so tight from first to twenty fifth. Really, it's it's not much. So it's you gotta be a, a really on your game. The team has to be really on their game. It's just uh, you're racing the best of the best. I mean, it's it's no joke. So. Uh, I wish we will have, will have run a little bit better, but I think uh, we had some speed at Richmond. We qualified 11th, uh, but you know, hopefully, just more in the future. I I said on the broadcast Saturday after you took the checkered flag, that's gotta that's gotta ramp things up over at Stuart Haas Racing to say, what where are we gonna put Cole? Because that that type of feat, you talked about how tough it is to win in the Cup Series and to beat the one of the best ever in the Cup Series and Kyle. Um, are you focused 2020? Do you think 2020 you'll go cup racing, or are you just racing for, for whatever happens? Yeah, I mean, that, that's the thing. I mean, you don't really know. I mean, there has to be an opening or something has to, you know, I don't, I don't really know what, what has to happen. But I think it <laughs> it's uh, – I'm just focused on what, you know, I'm doing in the Xfinity stuff, you know, winning races and stuff like that. But it's – you know, it's tough. I mean, everybody wants to race on Sundays, but uh, – you know, it is what it is. got to just focus on what you're doing. Well, the more you win on Saturday, the more that talk will, will become um, serious and somebody's going to have to figure out where they're going to put you. Yeah, I mean, it definitely, you know, it, it forces their hand maybe a little bit to have something happen. But, uh, you know, I'd like to win some more races also before that happens. Well, I am provided with stats and bios, and I thought I pretty much knew you. You're a California kid, grew up, started racing quarter midgets. But everything from the first sentence in your bio – Cole Custer has risen from quarter midgets at age of four. I mean, that, yeah. starts the, that starts the whole conversation because everything you've accomplished, the wins you've had all the way to K&N, into the truck series, everything is prefaced by youngest, youngest, youngest. How does that make you feel? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the new thing now. I mean, when everybody's, you know, growing up racing and moving up, everybody wants to be the youngest now. So uh, I've, you know, been lucky enough to have some records and uh, – 
be the youngest in a lot of different areas. And uh, but you know, it's not about that all the time. You want to win races and uh, you want to be the best. So it's just a matter of getting better and better every day. And when you go to the Xfinity races, uh, preparing to, to to race on the weekends, what's what's preparation like for you? Is there and I know I know this. I kind of know the answer to this question because I talked to Kevin Harvick, and he said you are like you're the most energetic, wanting to get get in his kitchen, find out what he's thinking, what goes on. Is that still your routine, or, or now that you have some experience, do you do more simulation? How's it all working for you today? Uh, for me, I'm huge on like notes and stuff like that. Uh, I feel like when I write things down, like I'm better at rem- remembering it, like when it's in the moment. So. Uh, I, I probably watched like five or six hours of races before the weekend, like from the previous race there. So whether it's just in-car stuff, like watching the throttle and, you know, how guys are working different lines and stuff like that. And then, uh, you know, restarts, I mean, watching a ton of restarts and how to pass, you know, different tracks are different things, you know, need different things. So it's just, uh, knowing in every single situation what you want to do. Well, last fall. I went up in the grandstands and I found Cole Custer watching a truck race at Martinsville. That was really cool. You like to go to the races even if you're not driving, right? Yeah, that was a really cool deal that we did. It was the kicking with Custer deal. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, we got to, you know, just take some fans up in the stands and watch a truck race with them, eat some hot dogs. So it was, uh, it was a cool deal. Hopefully we can do that again because, uh, you know, I, was, I think it was pretty fun and uh, hopefully – See what we can do. Well, this weekend is one of my favorite weekends of the year when we go back to Martinsville and, and race on the paperclip and pushing and shoving and grinding. How about breaking it down a little bit? We saw some amazing speed out of Kyle. You talked about the competition. The Cup Series from 1st to 25th was so close, but he made it almost look easy. When we get to Martinsville, of course, the talk's always about Jimmy Johnson. He runs well there. Denny Hamlin has always been a strong uh, competitor at that racetrack. Harvick, who do you who do you think's the favorite this weekend? Yeah, I mean Martinsville is tough because it's so many guys uh, are in the fight. Really, I mean everybody's so tight, especially at Martinsville because it's only a half mile, so they're within hundredths now, not just tenths. So it's uh, it's going to be a really tight race. I mean Hamlin always runs good there. Uh, Kyle's going to you know the same characters, but I think you uh, you know you'll, you'll find out on practice day who's going to have the good car. We talk about racing and and being young and, and personalities, your personality really came out up in Canada when you, <laughs> when you got punted out of the way on the last turn of the last lap. And I know, uh, because we're, we're, we're buds a bit, that you, you played sports in high school and you ran a little track and you pole vaulted and, and you played defense on the football team. All those attributes, all it took to be successful in your high school career came to the main stage in Canada when you hopped a wall and ran across the track and tackled a guy. <laughs> uh, how, how, when you look back at that, who, who was that? Is that who Cole is? Uh, I guess at times, <laughs> if uh, you push me into that uh, area. But, uh, yeah, that was, that, was a, that was a crazy day for sure. <laughs> I, mean, I was uh, not in the best mood right there. But, uh, you know, it's just one of those deals. I mean, you're going to have that sometimes. It does happen. <laughs> and, um, and, and, and just one, a quote that your owner – one of your owners, one of your bosses, I guess. <laughs> had, you have several bosses, don't you? Yeah, I got all kinds of stuff going on. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Stewart said uh, this week that the drivers, they have to show their personality. He said these kids have a lot of times rich fathers with deep pockets and think they belong in race cars. Those are some pretty strong statements by Tony. I know your dad. I know you. And the pockets aren't, aren't that deep. You just got a good opportunity of taking advantage of it. That was a lot of personality when you when you uh, went and talked to John Hunter up in Canada. Can can you do you see where Tony's coming from, or, or does that make sense to you? Yeah, I think so for sure. I mean, I I've always tried to be the kind of the choir guy because I'm not the guy who's just going to boast about myself or anything. But I think uh, you know I'm very lucky to have the opportunity I have with the connections I have in the sport. So I'm just trying to do the best I can and uh, hopefully you know get better and better every day. But it's uh, it's tough. I mean, our sport's in a kind of a weird time right now with, uh, you know, how the funding works and everything. So, I mean, hopefully, you know, I think everybody's trying really hard on the social media side of things to try and show their personality and stuff. So hopefully we can keep getting better at that. Uh, and you just get more and more comfortable with it as you go, too. I mean, it's – I would – I didn't want to talk on the camera at all when I first started <laughs> when I was, like, you know, 12. But now I can, I can do it. I'm not the best at it for sure. But I think uh, it's just a matter of time. 
Yeah, it's it's been fun to watch because, like I said, I was with you when you were 16 and you you won that truck race, and you could really see. And and I think that's that's really a great point you make. You can see that a 16 year old kid that just wasn't his personality, and now mm-hmm. at the age of 21, you're like, yeah, this is part of it, and I'm I'm gonna make sure I take advantage of it. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's just how it works, you know. I mean, you don't get too many opportunities to, you know, drive race cars for a living. So uh, you definitely don't want to be the guy who wastes that opportunity. So uh, it's just it, every aspect. I mean, that's what you come to learn is just, you know, there's so many different things you have to do during the week to get ready. And then also, you know, off, the off-track stuff, like we were talking about, the personality side of it and trying to get more fans into the sport. And, you know, just the whole package has to work to be in the Cup Series, I feel like. Well, I really appreciate you stopping by Walter Unfiltered, our podcast. I'd like you to subscribe via your favorite podcast app and listen to yourself. Yeah, I need to do that. I'm, I like checking out these helmets, though. Yeah, these are pretty sweet. That's some good stuff. I traded helmets with J- Jimmy Johnson, and then that's from a Toyota commercial. And then that was one I wore with um, for Dale at Daytona when I ran my last race. I feel like every every person you have in here, they're just going to be in awe of all this stuff. <laughs> you have to go through it every single time. Yeah, this is this is good stuff. Thank you, Cole, very much. Oh, don't touch me. I'm oh, sick. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's it for week five of Waltrip Unfiltered. Be sure to tell your buds about us. Give us a five-star rating and go to your favorite podcast app and register. Sign up. Subscribe. I'm not down with all the lingo, but any one of those will work, I'm pretty sure. We'd really love for you to spread the word about Waltrip Unfiltered. Thanks to Cole Custer for stopping by our Charlotte studios. And appreciate everybody tuning in and listening. Can't wait to go short track racing. We'll break it all down from Martinsville next week. Thanks. Have a great one.